Hello and welcome to the African Regional Conference 2016. I'm James King, the Bankers Africa and Middle East Editor, and I'm joined now by Sunil Benimadu, who is the Chief Executive of the Stock Exchange of Mauritius. Sunil, welcome to The View Thank From you. Series. Thank you. Now, let's start with perhaps a regional picture here. Sure. The last couple of years haven't been kind to, to Africa's uh, equity markets. Um, do you think the worst is over? Well, uh, you're right. The last two years, especially 2015, was a very difficult year for African equity markets across the whole continent. Uh, but it was not only an issue of African markets, I think it was also a problem for Frontier and some of the lar even larger emerging markets. And all this is due to the uh, slowdown that we saw in China, the crash in commodities prices, and as you're aware, Africa is very commodity centric in many of the larger exchanges like Nigeria, for example, and, uh, and also the currency crashes that we, uh, we saw in many of these countries created a sort of uh, uh, cautious uh, uh, approach to investments into these markets from the international investors. So 2015 saw relatively large outflows uh, from African exchanges across the board with the exception of I think Ivory Coast uh, and the reason why Ivory Coast did well and positively ended the year it was because of the end of the crisis and it was starting from a very low base but across the board as you rightly pointed out 2014 and especially 2015 has been very difficult. In many ways the Mauritius Stock Exchange sort of stands apart in the regional context of being quite an internationally focused, sort of out focused exchange uh, with multi-asset class, multi-currency exchange. Does you, do you think this will help uh, moving forward? I think, you know, uh, the, the business model that uh, the Mauritius Stock Exchange uh, started with uh, had uh, certainly allowed this exchange to achieve many of its objectives. But then, by 2008, we realized that this business model had reached more or less the end of its life cycle. So we had to reinvent ourselves, and we saw a golden opportunity for us as an exchange to leverage on the success story of Mauritius as an international financial center, especially within the global business sector. So we decided to move away from what historically had been an equity-centric domestic oriented exchange to a multi-asset class internationalized exchange platform and to achieve this uh, strategic shift and this new orientation we implemented a number of fundamental uh, changes to our regulatory and to our operational framework we came up with new listing rules that would allow us to list a whole variety of financial products ranging from equity products debt product structured products, depository receipts, ETFs, and so on. But we went beyond that because we wanted to attract international issuers that are investing in Africa and other emerging regions of the world to use our exchange platform for capital raising, listing, and trading. So to be attractive to the international issuer, we realized that we had to put together uh, a platform that is multi-currency that would allow the issuer to uh, raise capital in US dollars, in Euro, in GBP, South African Rand, list in any of these underlying currencies, trade and settle in, in any of these underlying currencies. Okay, sure. Now, as a final point, Sunil, one of the big topics at this year's arc is this idea of, of connectivity and in particular the role that Mauritius can play in bridging a gap between uh, Asia and Africa. And to that end, at the end of last year, the Stock Exchange of Mauritius signed uh, an MOU with yes. the National Stock Exchange of India. Yes. Um, what will be sort of the concrete outcomes of that MOU? And how well, I think the, the, the objective of this MOU is, is multi-pronged. Uh, I think first we, we wanted to leverage on the uh, experience and expertise of the National Stock Exchange so as to drive a number of training programs for our investors but also for our uh, participants, market participants, and also try to collaborate with National Stock Exchange with a view uh, over time to extend these training programs to a larger community within the African continent. So that was one of the objectives that we set up. A second objective was also to leverage on their know-how and expertise to grow our product suite in Mauritius. So, uh, of course, as an exchange, 
We've grown from a do domestic equity centric to a multi asset class internationalized exchange. We have a wider variety of products that we're offering to our investors today. The next logical step in terms of this growth cycle is to get into the derivative space. So, National Stock Exchange of India is very well known for the pioneering moves that they've made within the derivative space. They are, the, by, by and large, the number one derivatives uh, exchange in uh, India and one of the most liquid worldwide. So we thought that uh, working together with them, leveraging on the experience and, and, and try to put together the pieces that would allow the stock exchange of Mauritius to emerge towards, uh, you know, this multi-asset class exchange platform. So these were some of the key reasons why we, we, we decided to, you know, uh, sign a memorandum of understanding with the National Stock Exchange of India. Sunil, thank you so much for your thank time you. today. It's a thank pleasure. you. Thank you.